Hey, hello everybody, this is Bird, bringing you a first person replay commentary. Uh, this is for a captain's mode game that I played this morning, actually. Uh, I was asked to play some scrim, so I had to wake up at the ripe old time at 8.30 in the morning and play some Dota. Um, normally I go to bed around 5 to 6 a.m., so this was a little jarring for me this morning, so I'm pretty darn tired now. It's like uh, 3, 3 o'clock p.m. now. But hopefully I can fix my sleep schedule, fingers crossed. Okay. So... Played three games. First game we played, I was Timbersaw, and then I played two Clockwork games. This is the first of the two Clockwork games. I haven't played Clockwork in a while, actually, probably since the LAN, actually, which was actually the last time I posted a Clockwork video, so, um, yeah. Clockwork's still a really good hero, though. Uh, he hasn't really changed that much. I don't know if he's been nerfed or buffed at all, actually. Let me think. Um... I don't believe he received a buff or a nerf in the latest patch, but there are some slightly different viable item builds and stuff like that, so... Ten seconds remaining. Oh, oh. Excuse team me. Pick. Damn, even he says his name the way that I don't like. Radiant team pick. I think that's a losing battle, guys. I say Abaddon. Everybody says Abaddon. Radiant team ban. I'm so depressed. Okay. Dire team ban. So depressed. Yeah. I'm going to speed Radiant this up. I don't actually want ban. this draft to go over the long time, so we're going to hop forward a little bit. Ban. I'll put it on four times speed instead of... Why is it trying pop-ups? I do not know. Offline. Maybe because I opened Xplit before Dota 2? I, I'm really confused now. Oh, and I bet you my Skype is not on Do Not Disturb, which is true. Okay, fixed. No problem. All right, so... Ten seconds remaining. First things first. Clockwork Goblin as a, I guess he's just Clockwork now, but um, Clockwork as an offlane hero is really, really strong. Um, not like extremely strong, but he's very strong against two heroes usually. He has a lot of potential to solo kill a support hero if the support heroes are a little uh, unsafe, especially if they don't have very good disables. Now, um, myself as a Clockwork versus a Abaddon or an Abaddon is very unlikely to get a kill versus one of those heroes because more, more often than not they're going to just be able to shield or disable and then run away but sometimes dying to a clockwork is going to happen in your lanes and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it in terms of uh our skill builds i almost always like maxine battery cell first for clockwork and in fact both games that i played i did this even though i didn't get the best exp in either one um and the main reason is because it gives you the most solo killing potential by level six once you can close the gap yeah once you're able to close the gap and you can use your battery assault and ideally cog yourself in with your opponent it should be able to secure you some kills basically so Whoa, we need to slow down. Prepare oh, for battle. Oops, that's not what I want. Slow. Okay, cool. Don't need that up. To the offlane! Okay, I think this is the generally best starting item build now for offlane heroes. I no longer am able to afford either a clarity potion or a ironwood branch, so I just make sure that I still have extra regen. So that's kind of the trade-off. You have less stats, hey, and you have less mana, but... You do get two extra tangos in the lane, which is not that bad. So whenever you're going to the off lane, in most cases, you're going to want to check the rune spot. So that's always really important to do. You can check the rune spot and block. Um, it's a little bit harder on the dire side, but for the radiant side, it's very simple to be able to check rune and then go block. So if you get lucky, 50% of the time, you're going to get something that will help you lane a little bit better. So that's always pretty good to do. Uh, best starting runes for a off lane hero is a haste rune. Or a usually haste is best. Invis is kind of okay. Um, double damage can be useful at times, but uh, illusion or haste are probably the best too. Illusion is nice because you can block pull camps with it, um, and haste is nice because you can pull the creep wave past your tower, which I usually do if I'm playing here like bounty hunter or lone druid or clockwork or something like that. So it's gonna be a regen. So I'm just gonna burn it right away. It's usually worth it just to burn the regens, but at least there's no other rune on the map that we have to worry about, and now we know that uh, they don't have it as well. So. Off to the top lane. Um, the first skill that I usually get, um, you can get cogs in lane and you can kind of like segment the creeps that it pushes back towards you. But I knew that I was versus a solo hero this uh, at this point because um, we did spot the tri lane bot. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be a weaver or what, but it does end up being an obsidian destroyer. So um, if it was a weaver, I would probably grab cogs first and I would probably try to harass his HP down. 
Um, I think skilling the battery slot right now is maybe not even worth it. I may be better off just grabbing cogs instead. But the problem is that OD's mana pool is very, very high. So my chances of actually draining his mana down using cogs is not really worth it. Because as soon as he starts casting a lot of minus int on me, um, it, it actually is going to really hurt my, my disable abilities towards him. So... On the bright side, my base damage is just about comparable to what he's working with at right now, so um, I can be pretty happy about that at least. And in fact, I have the most last hits in the game. Hell yes. This definitely is not the case later on, but um, these first couple waves, I was actually last hitting really well, and I was happy with that. So, In fact, I actually have a couple more than the OD. I definitely beat him in the first minute or so. First minute or two, yeah. I, I definitely had a lot more last hits than him, so... Pretty good start for me. I'm just gonna do a very slight cog harass there. He will banish me away for whatever reason. I really should have denied that creep. Could have gotten a deny, guys. And again, if you're in a 1v1 matchup, you should probably always have battery salt. At least uh, level 2 by level 3 is really good. Um, you can also do the 1 on 1 skill build. That's not necessarily something I recommend, but it, it'll work as well. Um, some people really like last city with rocket brush. It's not bad either. Um, and in fact, probably grabbing at least one level would not be bad just because like you can do a lot more tricky things with rocket. You can basically use rocket to get last hits that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So for example, if there's a creep wave or a creep that's too far away from you and you're not going to get there in time, if there's two creeps low in HP at the same time, you can last hit one and then throw the rocket. Oh, cool. The icons updated. Um, this is uh, the new patch here. So if you ever pull a tango, it looks like these little like green orb things. It's like one of the little orbs that you can see inside the leaf here, essentially. It's pretty cool. I thought I was going to be able to get that that deny, but I, I did not. The OD is also not really banishing at the correct times. The times that you actually want to banish somebody is um, usually you want to banish them as they're going for a last hit. If you just banish them arbitrarily like he has been so far, it does increase the amount of uh, minus int that I have on my hero. But the important part is actually to prevent me from not only... Basically to prevent me from getting last hits is, is not a bad thing to accomplish. At this point, I'm happy to prioritize denies over last hits because again... Um, wow, their team has no last hits this game. They are not doing so hot. I guess it is a Shadow Fiend versus a Razor, which is not very good for SF, but holy crap, they have like no farm this game. Um, anyways, yeah, prioritizing denies against something like an OD is not that bad for me, so I don't have to feel too bad about it. And actually looking at the CS totals now, it, we really did well against them. Right there, I was just trying to possibly threaten a COG. Um, he's starting to get to the point where his damage is really, really high compared to mine. Um, I, I'm not sure, let me go click on us here quick. He's hitting now for like 79 with all this bonus int that he has, so it's actually, I'm, I'm getting a pretty big um, last hit deficit pretty soon here. Or at least it's going to be a lot harder for me to get last hits quite soon. So rather than doing full denies, I'll probably have to start trying to do weird stuff like hitting the creep a little early, for example. That way the creeps maybe get the last hit instead of me, because that's often uh, oftentimes better than him just getting the last hit. And by often I mean always better. Something that I maybe should have purchased immediately upon getting the lane is a magic stick, I, especially since I had so many last hits. Like, I, I don't have to worry about not being able to afford boots or whatever. I, I'm going to be able to do it no matter what, so I probably should have just bought a magic stick because the, the charges could have been at like 6 or 8 by now, which is, you know, that's free mana, for example. A lot of free mana, in fact. Um... And kind of think about it, think of it like tread switching. If I only have 26 mana right now, and now I'm down to like, what, one mana? I have one mana right now. That means that if any of my mana regens, by the way, and, and it just did, by the way, because this thing ran out. If any of my mana gets burst healed, and then one of these charges run out, then I just get a full heal, basically, which is what's happening. Although my mana is so drained that it doesn't give me anything right now, but I'm trying to prevent him from uh, draining me constantly, but... Last hitting is definitely more important than anything else, so despite me last hitting a lot better than him in the first couple waves, things are now evening out a lot. But honestly, even going even versus a, versus an OD is not bad at all. So at this point, I finally go buy boots. I'm also going to pick up a magic stick. That if he, that way, if he casts on me anymore, I will have charges. But I should have bought that a lot earlier because I definitely could have had like five or six charges. I knew their trialing was going to be bought anyways, and it likely wasn't going to leave because it's a pretty aggressive trialing, a Crystal Maiden Weaver and a uh, Abaddon. I wanted to pressure him with the battery salt, but once he went left, I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to need to kill. I think the only way that I, that would have been effective, I think, is if uh, I actually went around the top half of the curve, and then um, he ended up... I don't know, he would have then juked, and I probably would have just wasted a bunch of time. So, honestly, I shouldn't even, even use the battery salt. I should have made sure that I closed to melee range first. 
Um, and again, I wasn't necessarily trying to get a kill. I was more importantly just looking to see if something could happen. And that's something that you have to try sometimes. And I definitely tried stuff like that way too often um, in the Clockwork games that I played today. But Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. what I'm trying to say is I fed. <laughs> I sometimes fed. In the lane, I definitely fed. No. In the other game, not so much this one. So if I want to worry about um, for team fighting the other lanes, I will have some mana problems. Basically, any time that he's casted at least one Astral Imprisonment on me, I won't be able to do a full combo. Like, I don't even have enough mana to do a hookshot right now, for example. So losing my int like this is actually kind of a big deal, especially at least for the early game like this. My CS is still solid. I'm still beating him by four, which honestly should not be happening. And OD can beat almost every hero mid. Um... Technically, this lane is pretty much the same. Uh, in fact, it's actually better for him because he never has to worry about missing uphill. He's really just focusing on banishing me, and he occasionally right-clicks me, I guess. But I opted to purchase a bottle here. We have a gank coming to the top lane, um, smoke ganked allies. That's a Naga Siren as well as a uh, Visage. So the problem is that I really don't want to get banished again. I stupidly let him banish me again. I walked up the creepway for no reason. That was a huge mistake because... They, basically, there was no way that I was going to be able to get mana here until um, the Astral runs out. Like, I could pop a bottle and all, and I think I did do that here. And it fills me full because it does, like, what, 60 mana or whatever? But they ended up getting a kill anyways. I was there for the support. I morally supported my allies, and that was pretty much everybody ganking. Except for our Phantom Assassin on the bot lane. So, that worked okay. And now that my int is coming back and my int is completely full, it's going to give me all of that mana, despite me previously only using my bottle charge for 13. I was contemplating TPing on the bot lane, but the problem was I didn't have that much mana, so I had to wait until the uh, Astral was over so that I could show up to this. Really important that I did this, by the way. I'm just going to use Battery Salt here to get some damage output here, and we are going to be able to kill the Abaddon. Again, if I would have teleported a moment too early, I would have been completely out of mana, mana by the time I arrived, and then I wouldn't have had anything left. But now, all the astrals are gone, and I'm actually sitting with a pretty good mana pool. And we do still see the Weaver farming down here, so... Um, most of the times, when you're playing Clockwork, it's important just to hit level 6, and then you basically have to go get kills. I knew that the Weaver was still here, most likely, so I was just waiting for the... Uh, Scoochie to end, and there it is. Scoochie ends, and we're able to get the kill. So I ended up assisting in a double. The um, Abaddon was likely to die without me, made it a little bit more assured, but the Weaver probably wouldn't have died without my uh, my help. So getting that kill off was actually really crucial and really useful for us, because that's one of their farmers. Especially because the, uh, the OD has pretty much equivalent last hits to what I'm working with. So if the OD has the same last hits as me, and I'm ganking the other farming hero on their team, then it really puts their team in a hard spot. Shadowfiend's now getting okay CS because he always does once he gets a couple raise levels, but um, so far a pretty okay game for us. I went back because my bottle was empty and I didn't anticipate being able to regen anything. And it looks like we're going to get a double kill here. Okay, yeah, yep, and we did. Okay, so now I have a couple choices as a clockwork. I can go gank another lane, or I can just TP back to lane and farm, or, or, or grab EXP, and that's what I did in this circumstance. Um, I don't really want to let him banish me too much, because he could definitely kill me. Uh, I don't know what his hero level is. Hero level? He is level 8, so if he banishes me, like, twice and then ults me, he'll probably do a good 500 damage at least, so I do have to be pretty careful about that. Should have rocketed a bit earlier there. Love Clockworks animation, it's so good. Um, other than a bottle and a magic stick, I almost always will buy treads on Clock now, just because um, in the past I used to buy stuff like Arcanes, but if you buy Arcanes, then you don't have very much survivability, and honestly, the Arcanes is a lot more mana than you need unless you make a mech. If you're making a mech, I think Arcanes can be useful, but um, the more I played Clock, the more I just said, why would I make Arcanes when I could just make a mech? Or make a make a treads. I can You can do in treads with a mech, for example. It's not that bad. I'm missing a lot of mana again, by the way, so I have to be worried about um, fighting. I, it looks like the OD is actually scared right now. He, he thinks there's a gank going on, but he, or at least he knows, but I don't know. He ran all the way behind the tower just now, and now he's coming back up to the creep wave so we can see him. I got banished again just now, which burned me all my mana, but then I like awesomely got some. Luckily, I was able to get a range and do a battery assault, so we were able to kill the OD. 
I could have also cogged that if I wanted to. You can interrupt TPs with cogs. Very importantly, though, you have to make sure you don't cog him into you. You have to, like, offensively hit him with your cogs. Otherwise, it won't cancel the TP. Really important. But I just did the battery salt. That was the easy one. So we pick up level 9. And I'm going to actually max out cogs second this game. Um, I don't always do this in the past. I will sometimes actually max out rocket flare second. And maybe it's a bit better because um, it does give you a lot more damage output. Like, Cogs is fantastic and all, just because of the um, the extra disable that it gives you, um, as well as the offensive mana drain. But sometimes it's better probably to do Battery Assault and Rocket Combos for kills. So I'm a little unsure right now, but um, I, I tried out the double max Cogs, uh, I think two games, both games um, that I played today, and I wasn't really that far behind in any of them. So. And I, I think it worked out pretty usefully, honestly. Especially against a Weaver. Weaver actually has very, very low mana in the early game. So um, you can definitely use it offensively. Um, I was able to purchase treads. I was a little scared that my TP was spotted here. Got my hookshot ready. Just waiting for an initiation here. Perfect initiation. And then I completely dicked up the cogs. Um, Could have possibly gotten a double kill there. In fact, we probably would have gotten a double kill. If I just moved my body very slightly to the right, if I moved my body slightly to the right, we would have had Weaver within the cogs, and we would have had Abaddon. So I just absentmindedly said, like, oh, yeah, this is going to catch both, and then it didn't. It pushed the Weaver out, and we ended up only getting one kill instead. So if I would have grabbed two heroes with that instead of one, that would have been a huge, huge swing, and we would have had a big advantage instead. So um, thus far, I've been playing clock just fine. Um, I should have gotten a double kill there, or at least we should have gotten a double kill there rather than just one. But as a whole, it's providing space for our allies. We, um, we were able to kill the support Abaddon which means the Weaver has to play really safe and overall it's just really nice for us and while your hookshot is on cooldown just go last hit somewhere and this is actually a pretty common playstyle for any clockwork player is that you basically just you basically just get a couple last hits like 20 30 last hits and then you just go roam like you need boots and you need some kind of regen source that can give you mana as well which is why bottles really nice and then you can just go constantly sit on the map and try to get gold by killing heroes um, every time that my hookshot is off cooldown, I'll usually roam towards enemy heroes, which is what I did twice on the bot lane. I said, okay, I'm six, I can go gank, there's opportunities, and then I, I made the ganks happen. So it's pretty important to go do those. I don't really need to sit in my lane farming. And, and even looking at my team, it's important to sometimes keep my lanes open, for example. If a lane is open, then Naga can go there and grab level six, or Visage can go there and grab level six. Just stuff like that is really useful. Um, in fact, if we look at the level of our Visage... He is just over 6 right now, so I don't know, maybe he got it from me leaving the lane, not quite sure. We're actually getting a bit out farmed now, um, as a result of a lot of their heroes being a lot more prevalent towards last hitting. And we were getting ready to dive on the top lane. We did see the Crystal Maiden shifting over, so we were a little scared about there being a crap load of heroes up here. So, this could make things a little iffy. Our net worths are actually still dominating them, and that's because we have so many kills. So, despite them having more last hits than us on a lot of their heroes, we're still doing really, really well. Looks like they almost have a mech. Got a Vlad's on our PA, so we're doing pretty darn well. If we take a look at the gold graphs as well. Yeah, we have a moderate gold advantage, but a huge EXP advantage. Again, they're last hitting better than us, but we've got a bunch of kills, which gives us gold. And most importantly, a lot of experience. So our levels are way higher, I believe. Yeah, their supports are still level 5, which is a pretty big deal. So no Abaddon ulti for them. Alright, so there was a TP bot, which means that there's one less hero guaranteed to be top, so that means we can actually team fight top now. So now we just gotta look for the opportunity. I really wanted to go in on the OD right there, so I'm gonna rocket towards the tower and I am able to see two. I felt a little unhappy about the fact that I rocketed there because it did reveal that I was actually on the top lane, which they may have wondered anyways because mid lane's not being farmed and they haven't seen Clockwork in forever, but... Oh well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Still just kind of waiting for opportunity. I'm sitting on the right side as well because um, if they do end up jumping us, they will come from that way, most likely. It's very important as a clockwork as well to not stand like right in the middle of the wave where everybody's standing. It's usually much better to sit in a place that gives you hookshot angles, basically. We are hoping to catch the Shadow Fiend as, um, as he came over. And I am going to be able to consolidate him or keep him separate. Problem there was, first of all, a, uh, okay, they did still get him. Is under 
think you should have right clicked the Abaddon there twice. That would have been good. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And the song's going to save our Razor anyway, so not the best engagement, Dyer's honestly, but it wasn't horrible. Um, I think going for the Shadowfiend kill was, it's, it felt fine at the time, but we were a little out of position. It was like, kind of, like, dragged them all very, very far to go for that kill, which was a bit of a mistake. I think this might be the, there was a really long pause in here. No, it wasn't. This one, I don't believe. I'm gonna speed this up though, because I don't remember exactly how long this pause was. There was a couple pauses over the three games that we that we had. So, um, yeah, my initiation was definitely a little overreaching. Um, I have a pretty I had a pretty darn good gold advantage at that time, and going in on the shadow fiend was was too greedy. In fact, he actually had pretty solid items. I believe he has treads and he had an ogre club, so he took a lot longer to kill than I thought he would. I thought I was honestly just gonna burst him down, and I probably would have if it wasn't for the abaddon, because abaddon came over, he healed the shadow fiend, and then he also shielded the shadow fiend. Which meant an extra like 300, 400 HP that I would have to burst through. And he ended up surviving, so. It was pretty unfortunate for me. Well, he did end up dying, but he en I ended up dying before I accomplished anything other than some damage, so. My rocket was way off. Not that it was going to kill anyways, it's only a level 1 rocket. Unlikely. So now I really wanted to kill the Shadow Fiend, and we had 3 heroes mid, so I figured if I can solo disable him that we should be able to pick up a kill um i purchased a staff of wizardry here by the way uh the reason is because i wanted to build a necro Dyer's 3 this game it's not something i've actually ever built on clockwork before in my memory but it's it's actually a solid clock item um if you think about it you're always going to be trapping somebody in with you i didn't realize that razor tp bottom by the way this is why uh, i decided to go in here and immediately the tps came there's going to be a shield as well as a, a heal on the shadow fiend and also a mech so he had about 600 HP, so if I do the math quick, uh, Abaddon is 7, so he probably did like 400 health, and then the mech did 250. If that Shadow Fiend was solo, I probably would have killed him, but he was definitely not solo. It was an Abaddon, and they also had a mech, so I accomplished nothing. I just died, so that was pretty stupid. And in fact, I, I thought that I was that I was fine going in, but I wasn't uh, wasn't okay either. Now my team is kind of fighting this, but this doesn't look very good for us. So I'm going to try to get there as fast as possible since I almost have hooked up. I was going to cogs him, so I want to make sure the, 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 uh, I wanted the Weaver to get hit by that. I really wanted to hit the Shadow Fiend with that one. It all worked out for us in the end, though. Do you get the Crystal Maiden? Okay, he cleaned up the Crystal Maiden. I was able to kill the Shadow Fiend, and then he went on the next tier as well. This is a mistake. We ended up losing our carry regardless, but especially because I was a killing spree. So if you have a really big killing spree as a carry now, it's really important that you don't die. Because I think that was he was zero. It's like seven and zero. Where are we at? Yeah, he was seven and zero with seven assists. Oh, we were kind of joking around, so he decided to go for the kill. They're like, kill that guy too, and he went back in. <laughs> And he ended up dying, because their end was, was nicely used. I mean, I guess it does power level the EXP on our our uh, PA a lot, but it's actually not that high ahead. He's only a level ahead of the Shadow Fiend anyway, so... Um, wasn't the best. Uh, my first hook shot on the Shadow Fiend, or my, my hook shot on the Shadow Fiend in the mid-game, or the mid part of the map, started that off and made it a bit crappy. Sorry my speech is a little bad, it's just because I'm tired right now. Sorry. Um, I only slept like five hours, four hours last night, so... But yeah, I wanted to make a Necro 3 this game. Um, it's a pretty good clock item. You're always going to basically trap somebody into the cogs with you. And while you, after you do that, you can summon the Necro 3s. And then there's no way for them to get away from those. And they're just going to really wail on the damage, basically. So it's really good, actually, to grab Necro 3. It also, since I want treads, it can increase my int component, which means I have more mana, number one. Um, and most importantly, uh, OD is going to be draining my mana often, or at least he might at some points. And he's also going to be doing ultis at a 
based on damage about uh, the difference of int between myself and him. So if I grab a Necro 3 and I increase my int by 15 or 20, even if he drains me, it's actually not going to affect my team fights at all. It'll still be useful here. So I'm just going to be kind of looking for opportunities to initiate now. Um, so I'm going to go stand over here. I did not get banished here. My positioning is actually pretty crap. Unfortunately, DK just kind of died. I was going to cog him for damage. Didn't happen though. Damage and mana drain, of course. Um, I don't know how much mana Weaver has. I might get a kill on this OD first. Abaddon makes things very hard to team fight, honestly. It's like all, the strengths of all the heroes are very, very slightly different. There's very few burst heals in the game, so it's you almost never have to concern yourself with that. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Considering uh, going in on many Dire of these things. Are fortified. And it's off. This initiation again was a bit of a mistake in my opinion. The problem with my initiation there, I did catch the, the Shadow Fiend obviously, and he had a haste, so this gave me opportunities to kill him, but the uh, the issue was basically that it forced my allies to run past the tower to engage, and one of them had already been banished by the by the OD, so that meant that initiation was going to be 4 seconds delayed. So them getting to where I was to back me up against the Shadow Fiend was just simply not going to happen. So whereas I had a really nice start, a couple small mistakes, um, some of them were moderate than others. <laughs> Kind of put us in a spot where the game was a lot closer because I was forcing bad team fights essentially. So my team fight decision making was not very good this game. I sold my south shield in anticipation of picking up a necro three, and we're gonna trade one for one. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Got a big farm wave here. This is pretty good for me. Except for that one. Missed that one. The nine light game is great. Alright, this is the mega pause that happened. Um, we lost the team fight. Which meant that they are going to take Roshan. And I'm going to speed this up a crap load. Because we literally sat here for 8 minutes. Uh, and I'm sure I'll be looking around the map briefly. Oh yeah, the other reason Necro 3 is really good in this game, because it detects invisible units, so if we use it, it's basically a guaranteed gem against the Weaver. So people have actually been building a ton of Necro 3s in the pro scene right now, especially on Nature's Prophet sometimes. Occasionally we'll see Prophet go the same stuff as he usually does in the past, which is like Shadow Blade and Sheepstick and stuff like that, but um, in pubs at least, Necros are very, very common. Um, people will sometimes build two per team, something like that. <sighs> Makes your pushing really strong. Uh, the range creeps, I think, do like 120 physical damage, which is crazy, and they attack super fast, and they all have this mana burn. The melee creep has a passive mana burn, like anti-mage, and the, uh, I think it's like 60 mana or something, and then if that one dies, it does 600 pure to whoever killed it. And the range creep has a range 225 mana drain, if I'm not mistaken, which can be pretty useful against the weaver. Again, weaver is a hero that I constantly want to mana drain. Um, he can time lapse through it, but... Uh, if he has level 16, that is. But if you do drain him and he can't Sakuchi anymore, the hero is pretty garbage. So um, maybe garbage is a bit too strong. At least in the early game, he's garbage without mana. Really bad without mana. Because he has really bad stat gain, honestly. His stats are not good. So. Okay. Back into the game. kind of forgot that they were roshani because uh, the game was paused for so long. Which is kind of fun. Should have gotten that last hit. And there we go. Roshani Ticked over to a Necro 1. Gives us some movement speed aura as well, by the way. Something I forgot to um, add. Attack and movement speed, I believe. It does both. Not just one. There it is, the most unassuming book you've ever seen. It also gives me 8 strength and 15 intelligence, which is really good stats. I mean, even sitting on strength treads now, I've got 570 int. Or magic. Mana. 
My, like, brain. I'm so tired. I'm so tired, but here I am making a video for you guys. I'm gonna try really hard not to take a nap today because I would like to fix my fix my schedule. If I take a nap, I'm just gonna sleep for like two or three hours, and then I'm gonna stay up really late again. And I don't want to do that. I'd rather just like adjust it a bit. I think that'll be for the best. So we're kind of looking for picks now. Um, if we look at the graph, we can get a scope of where the game is and how we need to react. This is all pause time. I believe, but we're still ahead. We have a gold advantage and we still have an EXP advantage. It's not as significant as it was before, but it's okay. So this means that we need to go around and preferably get some hero kills. And it, it's a bit scary to do that. Again, they have ABBA. They've been doing a really good job TP supporting, so that hurts things as well. But we should be able to pick up kills. The fact that I have more GPM than the OD is not good for the OD. Sitting at 1, 3, and 7. It's probably most of it. I don't think his last hits are very good still. Yeah, his last hits are the same as mine, which is not acceptable. So, Shadow Fiend's really farmed. Our PA is close behind, but PA is a lot better solo killing heroes, so you could argue that PA's farm goes a little farther. I dropped my Necro very briefly there because I wanted to get slightly more HP regen out of my bottle. I should have dropped it a lot earlier, but I didn't think about it until that moment, so... And this is one thing that you can actually farm very easily is Clockwork. Jungler camps are not bad, just tread switch to Int. You can use Battery Assault and then shoot rockets occasionally. I was kind of scared the Weaver was going to have to... I'm sorry, that the Naga was going to have to use uh, his sleep. Doesn't quite look like it though. And again, going to try to get all the last hits. I think I got all but two of those, which is pretty good. I shouldn't have done that first hit, or that second hit on the catapult. And now I'm about halfway to my next necro. Usually you don't see this much farming on a clockwork, but um, getting items up on the Phantom Assassin is pretty important. I feel like we're close to an item. He's got his basher now, actually. We could actually go fight. Um, there's the typical PA item build that I was talking about the last time I made a PA video. You go phase, you go Vlads, and you go drum. It gives you a lot of really good early game fighting power. Basher afterwards for some disable, and that's a pretty standard build. It's like Weaver has finished his Lincolns as well, so disabling him will be a bit harder. Things that disable Lincolns that I'm working with, um, it will stop the stun from hookshot, I believe, in the damage. It'll also stop one instance of battery salt. So battery salt's actually really good against Weaver, because if just one of those little, one of these little bullets here, any of those, if that hits him, he will uh, break his Lincolns. So not very good for him. Pretty good for me, though. I'm going to try really hard not to fall asleep while I'm recording this video. I'm putting effort in this. I feel so much like sleeping right now. <laughs> now that my rocket's almost maxed out as well, I can use this for slightly different reasons. Um, um, more specifically, you can use it to counter push if uh, our lanes get pushed, things like that. I could also be stacking right now, but since most of the neutral camps are dead, I'm just going to sit right here. And as the game goes on and on, I actually have less and less farm preference uh, over my other teammates. In fact, our Naga is actually farming quite heavily, and we're having her farm quite a bit because we're a little worried about the late game in terms of carry potential. So we actually had her taking a lot of the jungle camps as well, which kind of puts me in more of a 5 role with Visage. Um, I'm not able to take as many camps then, so whatever, I'm okay with that. I honestly have enough items already, so... Necro 2 is going to be finished, so more damage and mana drain and all that good stuff. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I could be spawning my Radiance Necro's jungle, um, but I, I'm not really a huge fan of the idea. It actually cost me quite a bit of HP to take out the Ursus, mostly because I don't have a Stout Shield anymore, so it does um, mean that I take full damage from those. They were able to take the bot tower because they have Aegis and we don't want to fight it. And now they're going to try to pressure the tier 2. And we'll see if we can defend it in time. So I'm going to start spamming rockets over there because I want to make sure the creep wave doesn't live very long. 
But uh, their push is actually really strong already, so it's going to be a little tough. I've also been able to save my magic stick up to this point, up to 10 charges, so that means during the team fight I have an extra 150 HP, which is very good. My, my, HP, is, my HP is actually really good right now. Uh, one of the downsides, though, is that I don't have very much armor, and we we're considering going in on this, but the problem is that we had a lot of heroes top trying to take a tower, and their wave came in, and it just didn't look like it. So at this point we said, okay, give it up. So we basically lost two towers. Look, their Aegis is just now reclaimed, which we knew about. So basically we had... A very small timed window to be able to engage them. Well, the, the timed window actually didn't exist. Uh, the, the fight was basically over. Like, We can't fight them when they have Aegis up because we're likely to lose a team fight. And if we lose a team fight, they could take a Rax, actually. A Rax and a tower, not just a tower. So we kind of had to do that. So back in the jungle I go. Another 500 gold and I'm going to have a Necro, so I think somebody said something like, let's defend that, let's defend that, and I didn't realize they meant tier 2, so I teleported. I actually could have just walked over, and they're going to end up taking it immediately, so whatever. They take the top tower, we figured that they weren't going to push for the tier 2, which I believe ended up being true, so again, back to farming. We can do an item check for everybody, because I'm sure you guys are curious. So the Visage has a Arcane Ogre Club. Our Phantom Assassin is working on a BKB, I think. Yep, BKB for him. Uh, that'll stop um, Obsidian Destroyer's ulti. It'll stop Obsidian Destroyer's orb. It'll stop Sakuchi magic damage. It'll stop Shadowfiend raises or Shadowfiend ulti. I think I think the damage reduction still goes through. It'll also completely stop Crystal Mania from being able to just shut them down. So lots of good things are stopped by the BKB. <laughs> Our Razor actually has a mech as well as an egg, so he's farming quite well as well. So, we have a lot of threats on our team, honestly, in terms of team fights. Saw so an SF pick up by Invis here. And again, I'm just going to finish a couple camps. Always switch to agility treads while you're bottling up. I killed that wave. I wanted to kill the wave, but I noticed my team was kind of pushy in the mid lane, so I need I needed to be here. Quite important. And there's my Necro 3, so now I'm pretty much as farmed as I need to be for the rest of the game. Um, we actually almost killed the SF there. We probably should have, but the rest of the team didn't really react to it. I think it was because they didn't expect an SF to actually be there. They thought that would be a fake one, but didn't end up being fake. So yeah, again. I have tons of HP right now, but we are working against a lot of Miner's Armor, most notably Shadow Fiend Aura and any th any bugs that Weaver has. I wish I was actually in a position to hookshot the, the Crystal Mania, but he is a great hero for me to initiate on. You know, one team fight that... Alright, we'll, we'll talk about this later. I'm looking for my hook. I was able to stun the OD. He did get a Vanish off on himself, though, which is good for him. And I got so blocked. That sucked. I was able to mana drain the the Weaver, but yeah, I think what we should be doing for a combo, we never did this this game, but you do a um, a razor tether on a carry, and then you immediately nog asleep, and then when you have like a couple seconds of what is it like ten seconds of the the naga tether then the sleep releases and then you kill somebody the downside is that they could actually burst heal somebody pretty easily and most importantly the um the od can banish somebody that's in a lot of trouble but i feel like that combo is pretty solid it could also allow me to set up some cogs on some important tiers for example so and i can honestly get out of that without having to worry about losing or um getting trapped in with them like if you do a cogs and you hit the diagonal cogs and then you walk through that small path you can get out but if they get out they're going to get triggered by one of the cogs draining them so it's not that bad to at least do that option, because then it guarantees you do 200 damage and 200 mana drain to somebody, which is, is actually significant for some heroes. Abaddon it's very useful, and Weaver it can be very useful as well. Uh, the rest of the heroes have enough in game that I don't think it'll matter that much, but mana draining the other ones can be useful. So, 
But yeah, I didn't really accomplish very much in that last fight. I spawned the Necros, and then I just kind of died. I, I don't think I really needed to cog them in. I think it was unnecessary looking back, but I played really aggressive this morning. I was just kind of like, had nothing to lose. It was kind of the way I was playing. I was kind of like, oh, whatever, let's go see if we can die or get a kill. It was like constantly what I was doing. I was like, let's go see if we can get a kill, and then I would die, and then I would die again. I would almost get a kill again, and almost get a kill again. I think the, the third game I played, I, I got this Visage down to like 50 or 80 HP or something and then I would die, for example. And then it, it would happen another time where I felt like I was about to get a kill and then I would dick it up and slightly be off in my estimations. I've got a hookshot, by the way, so I should be looking for an opportunity. We kept talking about getting pickoffs. Again, they're out farming us. The Weaver has a lot more farm than our Razor does now, so the game is getting a little bit weird. Look at like CS and stuff like that. Actually, our Razor is sitting very very close to what the Weaver is, but it's like Weaver has a lot more kills, yeah. This Weaver is a lot more positive than the Razor is right now. Boom, there it goes. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, I thought Razor bought back. I was like, what? When did Razor buy back? I don't remember that. We were considering fighting over here. We knew that Roshan was up, so we just had to position a bit to make Roshan happen. I did not want to go in on the Shadow Fiend if possible. I don't know why he got Diffuse Ablated, that didn't make sense to me. I did spot Crystal Maiden over here though, so. Luckily we had Vision because the Necro Reese, that was pretty good. I was having some micro problems here. And then he just like two shot my necros. So I gave him 200 gold from that. Not really worth it. His orb does extra damage to summoned units. So OD is actually very good against necro threes. Something I did not think about till now. But yeah, he's very good against necro threes. If he has the shield on him as well. And he's not too worried about taking 600 pure damage. Then he's just going to cut right through it. Doesn't matter to him. Um, I purchased a chainmail at this point because I was aiming to make a blade mail because I figured there was a lot of times where I just ended up taking too much damage. Oh my god, he so should have killed that. That was like two seconds. We we told him to kill the uh, the Aegis with his bats, but instead he just double stomped. That was, that was a pretty big mistake. Because then we can't fight again for the next six minutes, so... Or at least we shouldn't. It's not as wise. So that was that was quite the mistake. The chainmail gives me pretty good survivability against a lot of their members. It'll counteract um, the Shadow Fiend passive, which is the minus armor aura. It'll also help me a lot against the Weaver. I may be thinking, thinking back on the game. I maybe should have just gotten a Ghost Scepter or a Force Step, though. Both of those items could have gotten me out of danger many times. I mean, the Necro 3 is really good offensively, and I can use it to deward and stuff, which I believe I did now. I was gonna stack, so I was like, well, the jungle camps are all dead, so rather than just stand around for 30 seconds and wait for the camps to respawn, I'll just spawn my necros and I'll go try to deward stuff, so I believe that is what I did here. Yep. Again, the uh, purple necro, the melee one, gives you true sight, so you should be able to see. And the ranged one does a ranged magic damage nuke, which uh, drains mana, so they are great. So there we go, I'm going to go stack. This farm will go to most likely my Razor or my PA. Um, I'm checking for wards now, and it was actually on that high ground on the right. I was like, why are there no wards everywhere? It's confused me. But um, That was why, because it was actually on the high ground. And I can't, you can't deward that unless you have like a courier flyover or something like that. So at this point, I was just kind of looking for heroes. I ended up spotting out the Abaddon, it looks like, but the Necros timed out. So that was the end of my fun. So I'll continue looking for kills. I'm gonna get some wards down on the top lane. My invis activated because it was timed out, basically. So I'll go see if I can spot anybody in the jungle. I think they're still all farming us on the map a bit. The last hits are actually less one-sided than they were before. The Razor has actually gotten a lot, but they are getting an advantage, basically, just from passive farm. And we haven't even had a team fight in them. Play 
is here. 12 minutes, nobody's died. Like, literally nothing has happened. Everybody has just farmed. Farm, farm, farm. Do it with flair. So we have a fight starting, so I'm gonna TP immediately. Looking for a hook shot on somebody. The best heroes for me to jump on are definitely going to be Crystal Maiden, because that's a hero I can definitely kill solo. I could also maybe trap the Weaver, but he can always time lapse out of the cogs, which means he should be able to survive that. So I'm just going to focus on positioning, basically. I need to be there in case my allies get caught, or if I see a really good opportunity where I can't pass it up. Like, getting two heroes next to each other is really useful. Um, Somebody staying behind while the rest of their team leaves, it would be a really good opportunity for me to go in, for example. But really weren't that many of those. I think this was dumb. It accomplished nothing other than putting my cogs on cooldown. I shouldn't have done that. It's like a 16 second cooldown. Most importantly, this prevented me from hookshot, hookshotting somebody and then guaranteeing a cogs afterwards. So if anything, it just put my attack possibilities down for 5 seconds. It's not worth using cogs like that unless you know the heroes are going to run into it. It's really not. It delayed their push by a very, very small amount of time. I, maybe I did it because we needed like 10 seconds or something, but... I cannot remember. So at this point we have really crappy wards. The wards on the top rune um, got denied. So we have no vision, so I'm going to start using Rocket to try to spot out their team. Um, in that case I kind of threw it across a region where I thought that there might be some heroes commuting through. Or somebody farming at the ancient spot. So that's why I shot a rocket there. I was like, maybe they're in the river. Maybe they're running towards the dire jungles. Uh, so that's why I shot it there. It's very, very important to be active with your rocket in these downtimes, especially when my mana pool is this high, because I really don't even need. Um, I really don't even need 15 mana every what, 14 seconds. I'm actually re I'm regening mana faster than that Dyer's point. And sometimes I can grab runes, for example. Oh, so. wow, that's actually the real. It's the real SF. I didn't really accomplish a whole lot. I was like looking at other stuff though. I think we decided to back at this point. I can't remember. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, everybody was pretty low, so that wasn't that bad. We got, um, did we lose anybody there? We actually didn't. That was a really good fight for us. We got the Aegis, and then we killed OD and Weaver. And we lost nobody, so that was really good. Um, luckily for me, I had a regen, so even though I took a ton of damage from the OD, I was able to back off and regen to full. Um, I'd have to rewatch my team fight, because I didn't watch what I did very well that fight. I was looking at other stuff, but I didn't do very much. I did very little. Actually, I don't think I did anything. I literally just summoned my Necro 3, and then people died. So, my positioning wasn't the best. I didn't really see a lot of hookshot targets. Maybe I should have swung around towards the uh, the jungle entrance, like up here somewhere. I would have gotten a, lot, a much better vantage point for, for hookshots at that point. So, I think I could have done that better. I think I did have my blade mail finished at this point, I believe, because we got the tower and a couple, a little bit of gold. So, cool things about blade mail on clockwork. Very often, you're going to be jumping into a fight and the other guy's just going to right click you. So, if you grab a blade mail, it's going to protect your HP by him being discouraged to attack you. And also, it's going to give you damage potential because now, rather than just using your items to do damage or your right clicks, I now know that for a fact that I can get a little more damage out of my, um, out of my team fight just by having a lot of HP. And again, I have a ton of HP because of the Necro 3 and the, the Treads, so. It's looking pretty good for me. We knew that they were going to the bot lane because I scouted that out with my rocket and saw them going there. In. So we told our Naga to get out, and he did. 
Um, the downside to Blade Mail is it does not work against BKBs, so the heroes that have BKBs already are going to take no damage, which is actually two of them. The OD and the Shadow Fiend will take no damage when they end up attacking with the Blade Mail. But Crystal Maiden, Abaddon, and Weaver will all take nukes. So that could be Abba's shield on a carry, that could be Weaver solo trying to solo kill me. All those heroes are going to take a lot of damage from me. So I'm just kind of shooting rockets around and looking for enemy heroes, basically. I figured they might be in our jungle still farming, because our jungle is very dark right now. Items after this that I could make, I could make a Ghost Scepter, I could make a Force Staff, um, I could make a Shiva's, with, like, I could carry a Plate Mail, getting a lot of armor wouldn't be bad because I already have good HP, so counteract, counteracting all the minus armor would be useful. Rune will not be top, but uh, Razor does get the Illusion Rune on the bot lane. Again, I'm trying to just spot out enemies, so I kind of wanted to start putting a lot of rockets between where the PA was last sitting and where their enemy team might be, just so we could spot them out a little bit before they end up showing. And it looked like we saw Roshan was up, so I'm just going to put a rocket over there that's going to guarantee this. And most importantly, they're going to be hiding next to us anyways, so... Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. It's like casting middle of the night Asian Dota guys. They seemed a little oh, hesitant yeah. to fight though, that's for sure. Um, Shadow Fiend has really good items right here though. He's got Treads, Butterfly, MKB, Manta, and a BKB. That means his damage potential is huge in a 1v1 situation, so PA actually has to be pretty careful. Especially because the PA actually doesn't have an MKB yet. So we're a moderate amount behind in terms of hero individual farm, but... Um, I don't know. It's not looking very good though, honestly. I wasn't feeling that strong at this point. I think DK finishes Refresher though, yeah he does. He does Eggs Refresher, so that's our saving light. Um, I haven't made that many videos with Eggs Refresher Razor, but it's really strong. It does a ton of damage. I went over here because I wanted to cog the, uh, this area so that they couldn't get through. Unfortunately for me, the Shadow Fiend just killed me. Um, and there's actually a pretty big pause here, so we have some time to talk about it. But first things first, we basically said, just kill Roshan. We'll, they'll be on the high ground, they can't come down and initiate, it's going to be okay. So the goal was to put all of our people into the Roshan pit so that we could just steal really fast. So I said, okay, if we're in the Roshan pit and I put cogs at the base of the ramp here, as they come down, they will be forced away because it's going to bust them back and they won't be able to get through very easily. So this could actually really mess up the fight for them. Problem number one, we had zero invis detection. So I did not see the weaver coming down. So. I kind of cogged a little late looking at the replay. Um, I could have cogged a little sooner. But basically if I would have cogged slightly sooner, maybe Weaver went to bed on top of me. I would have taken like 150 less magic damage or 120 and maybe I would have had enough time to pop my wand. I think the Shadowfiend is honestly going to kill me anyways though. Because he just ultied on top of me and he did like two right clicks and I died. Just immediately dead. So my cog was really close to him which is part of the problem. But So me dying at the start of the team fight was pretty crappy. I didn't get anything off other than the cogs and summoning the Necro 3. So at least I got the Necro 3. That's going to give us a vision for the team fight. Um, I checked the items later and I believe we had we actually had zero detection. We had no sentries. We had no um, dust. Which I think is kind of unacceptable considering the heroes we are playing against. But at least I had a Necro 3 so that helps. So we will resume. All right, looks like it's about to start here. Again, I'm gonna try to micro the best of my ability, and by that I mean suck. I think the first couple seconds I, I really messed it up. I was like trying to spread them out, I think. Um, I think I was checking mana levels on other heroes, see like who has the most mana, is anybody really vulnerable to getting drained or something, so. Now I put them on the Weaver. That 
That has got to be a buyback, right? Looks like it. Yeah, he bought back for that. That was the dieback. So we crushed that fight really, really hard. We lost myself and we lost Naga, but we got everybody else. And it's basically just Eggs Refresher Razor does a ton of damage to solo targets. Um, I was able to right click the Weaver. Weaver was basically just sitting there tanking it and then he time lapsed and then he kept tanking it and then he just died. It was pretty weird. I'm kind of surprised he didn't run away, honestly, but I don't think the cogs really helped that much. They were talking about how it helped segment them, but I, I don't think it really did anything watching the replay. In fact, almost all of the sleep was used just to set up, and by the time Dyer's the sleep ended, my cogs disappeared attack. at the same rate. So it was mostly Dyer's just them 4v5 being really strongly, and the uh, the double, the Razor ulti, or the two Razor ultis just doing major, major work, which is what happened. And then Shadow Fiend threw his life away. That helped a lot as well. So. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Now running Dyer's back to the team fight. Are under attack. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. And it's off. At this point I'm a little worried about counter pushing Dyer's slightly, so I'll shoot at least one rocket attack. top to make sure that I do a ton of damage to the wave, which means our wave should be able to defend Dyer's it. Top tower and now I'm looking fallen. for a hook shot. I pop Blade Mill, I pop Necro 3. My Blade Mill actually paid off really hard in that, in that circumstance. A lot of those hits with Shadow Fiend actually hitting me during Blade Mill. I mean, it took a while for his uh, BKB to run out, but it did actually reflect a pretty darn good amount of damage. So uh, the Blade Mill actually did really well in that last fight. Um, so yeah, I had a bit of a rough early game, but um, it worked out okay. My hook shots after the very beginning of the game were pretty solid. Like, uh, I mean, my start of my game was really good. I got the double, I ganked twice, and then my mid game I initiated twice on targets I shouldn't have by the mid lane. Um, but other than that, I think I did okay. I had a couple team fights where I did. I got a little flustered, but at least in the last fight, my hookshot was perfect. I trapped in two squishy ish, squishy -ish heroes, Outworld Devourer and Crystal Maiden. I popped Blade Mail, I popped my Necro, and trapping two heroes together like that is really solid. It just like gives us really good kill potential, so my hookshot at the end was good at least. But that's basically how you play Clockwork. You really don't need that many last hits. You can build a Necro 3, you can build an Aghanim Scepter, you can build a Force Staff, you can build a Ghost Scepter, you can build a billion different other things for Clockwork. There's really so many good options for the hero, but in this game I said they have a Weaver, I want to get some more Int because of an OD, I'm going to build a Necro 3, and it honestly was a very, very solid item that really helped us out a lot in that game. So that's Clockwork. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot more. Uh, last time I played him was at Landhammer, and I gave very little commentary. I, I basically gave zero commentary that land because I just wanted to win the money, but um, I hope you guys know a bit more about Clockwork now. I really do recommend maxing out Battery Salt. At the least, get two levels. Don't just leave it at one. One level only does 15 damage per burst. If you get two levels, it does 35, which is a huge increase, so um, at least two levels of Battery Salt. Generally, max it by seven, though. And then from there, either Rockets or... Um, uh, or cogs, depending. I, I, was, I would argue that if I was playing mid, I would most likely get rockets, because it gives you more solo kill potential. But if you're playing offlane, it's probably a bit better to go the, the more utility build out of the max cogs, I would argue, is maybe what I would say. So, I think that's it for the Clockwork game. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys are not too salty about there so far not being a Halloween event. I've heard reports that there may, it's very likely or very possible that there just simply won't be a Halloween event, so, um, We'll get through this one together. I'll just make more videos or something. I don't know. I actually do have a Dire Tide playlist from games that I played a year ago. If you want to watch them, I can put them in the drop down box below and you can pretend like that's current. Would that make you guys feel better? I don't know. But I'll put that down below. If you guys don't know what Dire Tide is, it was the Halloween event last year. It was really fun to play. There was a lot of bugs at the start, which um, they eventually patched out. And there was a lot of abuses and dumb things people would do to win, but um, whatever. It is all over, probably forever. Um, other than that, cool things I've done recently. I did an interview with the Good Luck Have Fun magazine, which I'll put a link down below if you guys want to check that out. 
it's a uh, i think it was a pretty good interview I, some of my speech was a little crappy like my sentences weren't solid because i was uh it was speech so i just talked and sometimes my thoughts aren't as as coherent as if i write but um i think it was a pretty good interview and i think i gave some interesting thoughts that you guys may not know about in terms of some valve developments and pro scene stuff and it was it was a solid interview so click that below uh you can go watch my dire tide videos if you're interested and uh number three what is the number three i did something else i ate lunch today that was pretty cool i think that's it i don't care i don't know what it is but i forget so thanks everyone for watching i appreciate it uh if you guys like the content and you're not subscribed please subscribe it doesn't actually help me but it's easier for you to watch videos so you should do it, I guess. Um, if you ever want to see me stream, I know I get questions like this sometimes. Just go to my Twitch TV page, make a Twitch TV account, and press the follow button. And then you'll get an email whenever I start streaming. That's usually the best way to find out when I'm streaming. Because I stream like every five days or something like that. Uh, not very often right now. That feels like the perfect amount for me. So uh, that's it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.